Memory flow is a dead simple way to organize your notes using just three spaces. The first space is vision. This is for plans, dreams, ideas, and things that will happen in the future. Stuff that you want to do someday, but haven't started just yet. The second space is flow. And this is for what you're actively working on right now. Current projects, this week's tasks, things you touch daily, and so on. And finally, memory. This is for finished stuff you may need to reference later. It's completed projects, old notes, archived information, and so on. And that's it. When you start something, it moves from vision to flow. When you finish it, it goes to memory. Less clutter, less stress, more clarity. I have an example set up here for this demo. So let's have a look at these three spaces, starting from vision. The first part is vision, which includes a few links to areas and tasks that I want to work on in the future. These ideas are either work in progress or they are ready to be worked on, but the right time hasn't come just yet. Let's review what I have here. For example, I have a link to my Cascade Planner, which is my way to plan a theme for the following months. I've described this in a previous video. Have a look if you're interested in this. If I click on this link, you can see that a new page opens, and that's a hub, a sort of a navigational page that contains links to individual pages one per month. And if I click on one of these, I can open up that note and further refine it until I'm ready to work on it. Or I can go back to the hub and I can keep adding new plans and ideas for future months. I can add new pages manually, or in this case, I can even click on this link to create a new note. This one in particular launches a shortcut that automatically populates a given month with the correct dates. More on this later on. A key concept is that I will keep this hub and these notes in the vision space until I decide it's time to work on them. And at that point, I will move that page to flow. Now, the vision section didn't start like this with links and so on. At the beginning, you start small like this where you have a single idea maybe you want to develop later. For example, I may have had an idea for a new YouTube channel, or I may have seen pictures of Namibia, and I wanted to consider it as a potential destination in the future. In both cases, I would simply take note of them for future reference. Later, I may start researching Namibia, so I would create a specific note about it that I link to this section. In the future, I may add new destinations to the list, but if I have more than three, let's say, instead of cluttering this list, I will create a hub that contains links to the specific destinations. To create a hub, I type twice the greater than sign followed by the name of the hub that I choose. And then I click here to create a new node. And then if I click on it, I can start customizing this page by adding a short description, the tag hub, and this will act as an entry point for similar ideas. And if pages are available, I will also link to those pages, like Namibia, in this case. Before continuing, let's review the folder structure that powers the memory flow. As you may have guessed, this workflow leverages links and hubs, which means that folders are not really needed. In fact, as you can see in the sidebar, I have a memory flow folder, which contains the memory flow main page, and a single folder that contains every other node I will ever add to memory flow. If you are the type of person that thinks in folders, there is no harm in structuring your notes using folders and subfolders, but you don't have to. In this case, for example, I have a couple of specialized folders here that serve special purposes. Beside links and hubs, the other way to access your notes is tags. The key principle here is that every note has at least one tag. This serves two purposes. The first, is to provide an additional way to search for notes. In my case, my tagging strategy uses three sets of tags. The first is descriptors, which answers the question, what is this note about? So if I wanted to save a note about a company report, for example, I could add descriptors such as report, um, the fiscal year, and maybe the project name. Then I have my action tags, which answers the question, what do I need to do with this? Or maybe which stage is this at? And finally, the future context which answers the question, under which circumstances do I want to find this note again in the future? Of course, not all notes require all three sets of tags. The second reason why we tag notes is to differentiate between processed and unprocessed notes, which leads me to the concept of the inbox. An inbox is where new content stays until it gets processed. 
I normally add new content to Apple Notes using Quick Notes. When it's time to process those notes, you can open the Quick Notes folder and find them there. But in my case, I've added two helper links here. One that launches a shortcut, which opens the Quick Notes folder directly from here, and another that looks specifically for untagged notes in the Quick Notes folder. For example, if I wanted to process my inbox right now, I could click on this link and find this note. It's an article that talks about a permanent portfolio. I can quickly add some comments, summarizing the key interesting points for me, and then I can add a few tags to it, maybe um, a descriptor and a future context tag. In this case, this could be useful for me for a future portfolio uh, rebalancing. Now that the note is processed, I can move it to the memory flow folder. And since I have a folder called finance in the memory section, I will open it and I will create a link to this article in that note because I feel it's relevant. The last thing to demonstrate is how to link to folders. As I said, there is no need to use folders with memory flow, but this could be useful on some occasions. For example, you may have some old content which is already organized in folders, like my video ideas here. If I want to be able to access those folders directly from my vision space, I can leverage these two links. I've created two shortcuts that open two of those folders. This one, for example, opens the idea folder. Once the shortcut has been created, I can launch it using a special link that includes its name. When you include this link, followed by the name of your shortcut, it will be launched when you click on that link. Now, let's have a look at the flow section. This contains links to the notes you're actually working on right now. It's current projects, it's a list of this week's tasks, and in general things you touch daily or regularly enough that you want to keep them handy. The content of this area can change massively depending on what you're working on. However, as an example, there is my monthly plan, which I dragged um, earlier on from the vision section, or a longer list of priorities and tasks for this week, where I can check off the things when I complete them. There is also a list of trackers, which I can access every day to track my progress in different areas. And I could have links to documents that I'm actively editing, like the scripts of this video, which will be here until complete. And of course, I have my monthly expense file, which I access several times a day to record expenses. This one here is a little trick that I use for notes, which I want to keep easily accessible, but without clattering the flow section. I tag those notes with the quick access tag. And then I've created a shortcut that pulls all notes with that tag. This link launches that shortcut and I can quickly pick the notes I need. And now let's cover the memory space. This space is for finished stuff that you may need or want to reference later. It's completed projects, old notes, archived information, and so on. For example, once remember is over and I've completed my plan for the month, I could delete it from flow and move it to memory. This is simple enough, but there is a catch. We don't want this to become a digital dump. So the challenge is to find the right balance between saving everything and avoiding clattering the interface. The first thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to save everything. Take this note for November coming from my Cascade Planner. At the end of the month, I have to decide what to do with it. And I have three options. Option one is that I could simply delete the note if I don't need to reference it again in the future. In many cases, hitting the delete button is the right thing to do with notes, so you avoid cluttering the system. Option two is that I could store it in the memory space. Maybe I want to be able to reference it to track my achievements at a later stage. In this case, I've created a specific note that tracks all completed plans coming from my Cascade Planner. This way, I have only one item in memory that leads me to all previous plans. The third option is a sort of a middle ground. Maybe you decide to keep the note, but without surfacing it in the memory space. And if you want, you can resurface these plans by using your tag cloud and looking for plan and complete, or whatever tag you've used to tag this type of information. Another interesting one is the forever diary. For this one, I have a link to a hub with every possible date as an entry point. It's 366 links that I've created manually, unfortunately, but once they are created, they stay there forever. And this is useful if I want to add something to a specific day, as I can click directly on the date that I want, for example, on this one. 
But I also have a shortcut that opens today's note so I can get straight to the correct note and record what happened today. This note is used to store the trackers so I can check progress over the year. In this case, instead of saving the link to separate notes, I prefer to copy and paste the complete trackers so I can have an immediate visual overview of how my year is going. For example, at the end of November, I will copy and paste the completed tracker for that month, and then I will clean the tracker note in the flow section so I can reuse it in the following month. As you can see, it's also tagged so I can still get to it when I'm looking for my achievements at the end of the year or in the future. I also have another couple of hubs here. One is of finance. From here, I can access my expenses files, articles, information about my portfolio, and so on. This page, like any other hub, acts as a curated list of entry points to stuff that matters to me. Creating and maintaining a page like this takes a bit of effort and time, of course, um, than simply dumping uh, the note into a folder. That is true. However, it pays in the long term as it forces my brain to process the documents before archiving them. Take this up for health as an example. In here, I have a link to all test results, medications, and whatever. And if they were stored as single notes in a folder, I would have to open all of them one by one to find the details or to see some patterns emerge. In this case though, because I've processed them before, I can simply look at my comments to have an understanding of what was going on and I can then access the detailed node only if I want to get more information. A similar thing happens with the contacts node folder. A click on this first link opens the entire contact notes folder where I can add details to existing contacts. This other link starts the contact notes shortcut, which allows me to add details to a new and existing contact and also set reminders for the next time I want to contact them. Now, this has been a very popular shortcut. Have a look at this video if you want to know how to use Apple Notes to develop relationships or friendships. Mine was just an example, but of course you can add as many hubs and notes you want to your memory section, depending on your needs. So I hope this video has given you fresh ideas on how you may want to organize and manage your notes. If you decide to give it a go, let me know in the comments how you get on with it. For now, thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.